Another week, boys, and another twab. This week at Bungie, Ada One is prepping for armor synthesis. Ah, there's quite a bit going on this week. The Guardian Games have begun. Hunters, Titans, and Warlocks throughout the system have begun competing for gold placement each day of the games. A few of us out there at the studio have pledged to help Warlocks as they attempt to prevent a sweeping win by Titans for a second year in a row. Hunters are already showing promise with some early wins. Maybe they learned from last year that they'll need to compete for more than a single day to win the trophy. Who will take the win? Only time will tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hunters, enjoy it now. For my Titans that are losing faith, don't. This is all going part of the plan. Now, moving on. If you're looking for an additional challenge during the games, the final Grandmaster Nightfalls required for the Gilded Conqueror title are now available. If you've been procrastinating a bit, all feature strikes of the season are available at Grandmaster difficulty. Yeah, we just actually finished up our guide for Warden of Nothing as well as Insight Terminus. Feel free to check that out, guys. But Bungie continues. Before we move on to some juicy details about armor synthesis, we want to give a quick public service announcement about the future of Nightfall weapons. Next season, three new legendary weapons will be added to the Nightfall rotation, which will also receive adept treatment when Grandmasters become available. As such, Paladrum, Shadow Price, and the Swarm will be taking hiatus for the first half of the season. When they return, all three will be available as potential post-game rewards when completing Nightfall's unfeatured weeks. Oh boy. All right, guys. Just kind of a loot warning right now. If you have not locked in God Rolls for these three weapons, I highly advise doing it because again, we still don't know what buffs are coming. It may be covered in this twab, but it's probably going to be the next twab. But a bungee suddenly is like, yo, we're buffing 450 round per minute auto rifles. You don't want to be the guy without the shadow price. You see where I'm coming from. So if you're looking to farm Pally, this week will be your last chance to do so for a bit until they return. Stay tuned for future twabs where we show off next season's hotness coming soon to a nightfall near you. Dude, this is fantastic though. I'm just saying, I'm glad that we're not getting the same loot for the nightfalls. We've got more depth loot coming. Speaking from when we used to do Grandmaster Nightfalls for no reason whatsoever other than a few Ascendant Shards, it's nice to get some real loot, right? Like loot actually being an incentive in a looter shooter? Yes! Now moving on to Armor Synthesis and Guardian's appearance. Since the launch of Destiny 1, we've seen requests for transmog systems. After some development time, Buckets of Sweat and a few Happy Tears were happy to introduce Armor Synthesis to Destiny 2. Ada 1 will be returning to the tower to help Guardians customize their appearance in a brand new way. Today we'll be explaining how this feature will work and how you can work your way towards your favorite look. Quick note, many of the following screenshots were from test builds, so some things may look slightly different than when it's released. Ah, alrighty, let's go! Before we get too deep, here's a quick list of steps that players will take to convert their armor appearance into universal armor ornaments. First, you must defeat enemies to earn Syntho Strands. Second, you spend the Syntho Strands on bounties to earn a Syntho Core. Third, you convert the Syntho Core at the loom in the tower into a Syntho Weave. And then fourth and finally, you use Syntho Weave to convert an unlocked armor appearance, legendary quality or lower, from collections into a universal armor ornament. Dude, I am like getting flax vibes from RuneScape, right? Like we're spinning bowstrings, baby. Now to start, players will begin earning Syntho Strands when defeating enemies inside of Destiny 2. After earning 150 Syntho Strands, players may visit 8 of 1 in the tower to acquire a class-specific bounty, which will reward a Syntho Core. When developing this feature, an early goal was to ensure players could earn Syntho Weaves through numerous activities inside of Destiny 2. That way, players who spend most of their time in the Crucible could continue to do so and still engage with Armor Synthesis. There will be five categories of Armor Synthesis bounties. Vanguard, Crucible, Gambit, Destinations, or Raids and Dungeons. Here are a few examples of bounties that you will see. So from the Vanguard, complete playlist strikes using specific subclasses, accumulate points in Nightfall Strikes. Crucible, capture zones inside of Crucible Control matches. Complete crucible matches and defeat opponents using specific damage type as a team. Gamut. Send and defeat bloggers in Gamut. Defeat primeval envoys, high value targets, and primevals in Gamut. Destinations. Defeat nightmares on any destination or in nightmare hunts. Defeat bosses while defending the blind well within the dreaming city. And then for raids and dungeons, complete the final encounter of any raid or dungeon. Generate orbs of power in raids or dungeons. Now, if you pick up the wrong bounty, some of the Sith of Strands will be refunded if you choose to abandon it, but not the full amount. So think carefully before abandoning. Now let's take a quick look at the screenshot here of the appearance customization screen. Oh, look at this. You see how the armor split and you can show the mismatch of different shaders. This is what I like to see right here, right? No longer do you have to exit out of menu
continues, etc. Now, Bundy continues. How many of these can you earn? Players may earn up to 10 synth weaves per class. And I think I've been calling it synth weaves. Synth weaves, but per class per season, except in season of redacted. To celebrate the introduction of armor synthesis in season of redacted, players may earn 10 additional synth weaves per class through the introductory experience. In total, during the season of redacted, players may earn up to 20 synth weaves per class, which can either be used to convert four full sets to ornaments or 20 specific items. All right, so starting next season will be the only season we can get double synth weaves. As a quick example for the hunters out there, that can mean you unlock four armor pieces plus 16 individual cloaks to swap between depending on your mood. Law, well, and look at here. You actually got the ornaments right here that you can just change through. I like it. The buddy states, please note some exceptions do apply. Universal ornaments may only be applied to legendary armor pieces. Exotic armor pieces cannot take the appearance of alternate armor. As we want to maintain their appearance for players to quickly identify and understand what exotic perks a players may have in all activities. I'm with this. I've seen other games where you can like put an ornament over a really strong weapon and make your character look weak as hell. And then the next thing you know it, that little toothpick sword is suddenly one hitting you. It's best to be able to identify the exotics. And honestly, the exotics look so cool anyways and the uniqueness that they present that I would just prefer the exotics stay the same in their looks. Now, there will also be a few exceptions at the launch for year one armor ornaments due to technical constraints. But we are currently working on solutions for a future season. These exceptions include Vanguard, Crucible, Iron Banner, Faction Rallies, Prestige Raids, and Trials of the Nine year one armor ornaments. So let, let me get this right. Any year one armor ornaments will not be able to be converted into a universal ornament. Well, that sucks. There's a lot of year one ornaments that look amazing, especially the Trials of the Nine ornaments. I wonder what the technical constraints are that Bungie's talking about. Now, ornaments can still be applied if the base armor piece is from an activity that the ornament originates. As an example, if a player owns Crucible ornaments from Curse of Osiris, they may be applied to Crucible armor piece at no cost. However, these ornaments cannot be applied to seasonal armor. Additionally, all base armor appearances from 2018 and 2019 Solstice of Hero events will be available for armor synthesis. However, due to an issue where 2018 and 2019 glows cannot be socketed alongside armor appearances in the new Guardian appearance system, the glows will not be supported. Well, hell, that was like the whole reason why we did that, right? Like, I like the armor, all right, but it was all about the glow, baby. Now, Solstice 2020 armor glows were developed with the Guardian appearance in mind, and players will retain the white armor glow if it was earned during the event. Subclass base glows will continue to function on their universal ornaments as well. All right, so essentially, Bungie's done some back-end work over the years with our Guardian's look and appearance to where going forward, whatever this technical constraint is, will be avoided. Now, Eververse. Eververse will also offer synth weave templates for direct purchase through the Guardian appearance screen. Players may either purchase a single synth weave or they may purchase a five piece bundle. A single template synth weave though, one token is 300 silver. Five tokens is 1000 silver. For reference, universal armor ornament bundles cost 1500 silver. To avoid mistaken purchases, synth weave templates from Eververse can be applied to any class. This is interesting and also a very slippery slope here. Very slippery bungee. I'm assuming this is how you can go above the cap though, right? Like if there is a cap of 10 synth weaves per season that you can obtain, can I continually just keep purchasing past the count through Eververse. So technically speaking, I can go ahead and purchase as many synth weaves as I need in order to create as many universal ornaments that I would want. Am I misunderstanding this? Somebody let me know if I'm misunderstanding this. Maybe Bungie will give us a little more clarity on this one, but that is something that we should be asking. And of course, will these synth weaves ever be available to purchase with Bright Dust? Now, Bungie continues. Let's talk shaders. Through the Guardian game appearance screen, we took an opportunity to improve the shader experience. Currently, shaders are one-time use consumables that may be repurchased from collections for Glimmer or legendary shards. Starting next season, all unlocked shaders will be visible on the Guardian appearance screen when hovering over the shader bucket. Players may apply shaders for 500 glimmer per armor piece. Additionally, we've added the often requested apply all button for a shader, which will cost 2,500 glimmer in total. This is the same glimmer cost to purchase shaders right now, but we've done away with the legendary shard requirement. Shaders will continue to be earned through various activities in Destiny 2 or can be purchased using Bright Dust or Silver from Eververse. 
shaders. With the update to shaders, we'll be increasing their costs from 40 bright dust to 300 bright dust. This will continue to be a one-time purchase and will appear in the guardian appearance menu when unlocked. Hot damn, Bungie. Talk about a price hike. Damn tower inflation. In celebration of armor synthesis, a year one Eververse shader bundle will also be available in the Eververse for Glimmer. No silver required. Looky there, fellas. Glimmer in-game currency. Voila. You can purchase this shader that looks kind of like mud. Yeah. And there you have it. We're excited for the addition of armor synthesis starting in just a few short weeks. Overall, guys, am I happy for this update? Yes. All right. Let, let me just be real. I have been getting deeper and deeper into the look of my guardian. There's something about it. When you feel sexy, you perform well. It applies in real life. It applies in the bedroom and it applies right here as a guardian. Even on classes that I don't care for. If I feel like our look is popping, I feel a little extra deadly. So overall, this update is a good one. And it's something that Bungie needs because so many other games that fall under the same category that Bungie's trying to fall under with this action MMO have this system. Universal ornaments, customizable appearance screen. The problem is, is where this update is resonating from. Is it resonating more from the perspective of, hey, the player, we're giving you more options to make your characters look sexy? Or is this going to be another pathway for Eververse to become more in focus? That's my concern here. Overall, let me just tell you, I, I mean, I like this, okay? More customization to our look all day long. But with a combination of future ornaments that may release in the future, as well as other armor pieces that may release only exclusively inside of Eververse, and the fact that Synth Weave will be able to be purchased with silver, it is somewhat concerning. Now, granted, it's customization, right? So if I had to choose the lesser two evils, obviously, if there was anything I would want Bungie to monetize, it would hands down be customization over things that actually help us in game. But we'll see how this all shakes out. Overall, I'm excited to see 81 back in the tower. I'm excited to see this system fully fleshed out. And I'm very curious to know what all of you think about this. Now, moving on. With another month comes another batch of loot for Prime. Oh, got some emotes, some ships, a ghost. Yes. How rare is the spicy ramen exotic emote? Is that rare? Now, as a final note here from DMG, thanks to a silly Twitter poll, my allegiance has been pledged to Warlocks for Guardian Games this year. Hunters, I'm sorry, but it may actually be nice lobbing Nova Bombs for the duration of the event. I don't think you'll need my help snagging the win, so long as you all show up. If a potential Titan loss isn't enough to get everyone out of bed, maybe the conversation around armor synthesis will be motivation to hop through some activities to round out our fashion collections. I've already started poking through quite a few armor sets, planning out my looks for the start of next season. Good luck to all, no matter which class you're playing. Hope you enjoy the games, and we'll see you out there in the wild. Cheers, DMG. All right, guys, that's your TWAB. Let me know in the comments below what you think. For those wondering, when is the sandbox update TWAB coming? It's next week. Bungie mentioned already before that it will be the final TWAB of April. So next Thursday, we should be getting all the details on buffs, nerfs, and everything in between. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.